Last time, on Lawful Stupid. You're in uh, the Grand Magus' tower. Well, <clears throat> I have some preparations to do before tomorrow. I'll be off. Feel free to explore my tower. Um, two rules, don't take anything, and please don't die. Really is a mess for me to clean up later. And so, Paul Barrow, you see um, an apparatus that's like a complex set of glass tubes and beakers. At the very bottom of this, there's a vial, and you can see that there's this, like, uh, galaxy liquid just slowly dropping. A little taste test. Uh, suddenly, there's a shifting of lights, uh, like a bunch of blurring lights, and then, boom, the sky is filled with stars. And above you, you can see five thrones. So, do you see these five thrones? And they're high up. They're a good 30 feet away from you. They they look like they were for giants. The light emits. And on that throne sits a female figure. And she says, What do we have here? Paul Barrow, you stand before a throne filled of uh, a cacophony of lights, a cornucopia of lights. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to comprehend. <sighs> and you stand before uh, what you would know is the god of Aya. And she is uh, this elven form and she radiates an otherworldly beauty. Her appearance is ethereal and she has a, a single lustrous braid composed of the sunlight and stars themselves. It, it cascades down her front as it's laying there. Um, <clears throat> her eyes, they, they shimmer like the moonlight and there's this, this serene glow to them. Uh, almost akin to the night sky. Her skin is this pristine quality, almost made of ivory and polished marble, blending to just an airy, graceful appearance. Um, She wears this simple gown that kind of flows across her body, uh, and it, it accentuates her natural Elegance and, and her enchanting aura. Um, the, the gown itself is is covered in in designs that depict uh, um, a, a portrait of celestial nature. Um, it, it almost mimics the constellations and inspired inspired by the motifs of the very stars and universe itself. And just standing there before her, you feel this this uh, feeling that transcends your very com- comprehension. You've known war, you've known fighting, you've known violence, but you've never felt true grace until now. And the words you hear are, What do we have here? Uh, I'm going to fall down to hands and knees and like not facing this, this being. I'm not going to say anything yet. I don't think, I think it's just like rhetorical. So I'm just, I'm just waiting for the next thing. Hmm. Well, isn't this interesting? Come now, little one. How did you get here? And and slowly, as if to 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 look and see if it's me that she's talking to, and then I'll look back up just to confirm. Eyes looking. She is looking down upon you, and she is giant compared to you. I was 
Perhaps doing something I was not supposed to be doing. And you hear uh, behind you, almost in your ear, (gasps) how curious. And she's standing behind you now, your height. Um, You mortals, always poking your noses in places they don't belong. And what inspired you to do that, child? Be honest. Boredom. She remains silent and, and stares at you through the through these eyes of of the moons and the stars. My brother's very good at cooking. His passion, his dream, he's accomplished. My sister, very in tune with nature. She's basically nature incarnate. And I have no true path. Great fighter, warrior, but now my talents, gone. I have no show to put on. The world is falling apart. I have lost my way. And so I try to poke into other rooms to find way. <sighs> A story as old as time. A protector, a brute. But now, what can you fight? What can you protect? (sighs) Why do the broken find themselves in front of me always? I do not know this. So, what would you call yourself? Barbaro. For someone who's lost, you seem to know that very well. It is a good name I have made for myself, but... You didn't finish your sentence, so she stands waiting. (laughs) I didn't really have a thing. I hoped you would stop me before I kept going. Hmm. It is all I have. It's what anybody has as their name. Well, Mr. Barrow, do you know who I am? You all seem very one of the great gods, I would say. But I do not know your name. I apologize. Hmm. That is to be expected. And can you imagine what I want? I am not smart, Bear. I do not know this. Hmm. All creations inherently are mine. Even you. I don't remember you. But please don't take offense. I ask you, Paul, what is it that you want? If you could have anything, what would it be? To be needed. He almost says it, like, ashamed, in a way. (sighs) Little boys with their sticks. And what would you give? I do not know this thing. What would you give to be needed, Paul? give my very best. <laughs> I'm not sure what you want from me. I just, are you saying you you help me be needed? Be great again? In arenas? In rings? Hmm. I don't know why I try. And she lifts up uh, this porcelain ivory hand and places it on your cheek, uh, assuming you don't try to move away. No, just to in reverence for Curly. Uh, so she she touches your cheek, and to say Paul Barrow has never felt pain, to say Paul Barrow has never felt happiness, grief, anger, all of those things they vanish, and you feel cold, and you see the visage visages 
of your fallen siblings. You see the cloaked figures of people you failed to protect. And then in droves, they march forward across and you see a battalion of wounded, dismembered, all of your victims. And she takes her hand off of your face and it's gone in an instant. Happiness, sadness, anger, guilt, grief, they all return to you in this... It's almost an energy that's built up. And she says, To be needed, Paul Barrow, what would you give? I would give everything. Give myself. (laughs) For my brothers, my sisters, it is all that matters now. I grow tired of you mortals. You You think think your life matters. And her eyes shift from this night sky and these stars to a harsh, bright sunlight. You're just like my siblings. So full of yourself. You have no siblings. How would you come here? And be just like everyone else. I thought I created something interesting, something unique. But you're no different than them. And their eyes shift from the sun and they're back to the night. She says, don't worry, dear. You have my attention. Paul Bearer, you wake up on the floor of the laboratory. Seemingly having experienced what could only be a dream. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Darlin spent her time reading a book. Gus, is there anything you would like to do just for fairness sake? Uh, I know I only gave you one run, run. So once more. No, I was cooking uh, up a storm and just staying busy with that. So. (laughs) Yeah. And so I think. It sounds like Darlin's crashing on the library floor. Mm-hmm. But on the fourth level, there there are like half a dozen guest rooms. So take your pick. And they're all pretty much the same. And if you would like to do anything else or continue to explore, you have that option. I'll give you each another round if you prefer. Or you can make a plan together. Go betty by time. Uh, and then we'll advance to the following day. Pick a bed and fall in it. Pick a bed and crawl in a ball. Think about life and go to sleep. Cry There's a sleep. book yeah, on cool. my face. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book on your face. Okay. <laughs> Nerd. Ah, shit. I've been caught. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm going to give you guys just the worst thing I could give you um, in the middle or in the beginning of an episode. The three of you awake, darling, with a book on your face. <laughs> um, Paul Barrow, potentially in the fetal position, and Gus just fat and happy. And I just have to let you all know, uh, you all advanced to level eight. Um, but I have to tell you, We don't really have time to get into the details of that as we march back into the story. Uh, And so the three of you awake. And um, darling, you are already there. Uh, But the other two, you slowly stroll out and um, into the the library. I would assume at some point, if you want to do something beforehand, we can do that. Um, But when you're ready, the Grand Magus is in the library waiting for you. And, darling, you were awoken almost by a book being lifted off of your face. Long night, huh? 
No, I was reading that. It's fine. Hello. Yeah, no. There's, there's a little drool on it, but that's fine. And he, like, floats it back up to its spot on the shelf. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but there was plenty of couches. You could have... Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Mm. All right. Is it morning, or are you having a late night? What is happening? Uh, no, it's it's absolutely morning. And you can see that the sun is rising over these mountains uh, in the distance. And he gives a wave of a hand, and the, the, the windows almost like tent themselves, tent themselves a little bit, so the sun's not nearly as blinding. Uh, once your brothers join us, we will <clears throat> discuss what's next. She'll look around, see they're not there, go to like the door where she expects them to come in from, because there's a direction, right? Just open yeah, the door. Yeah, it's just the one door that, that leads to that little section of rooms and then the staircase down. Uh, you know that sibling call when you have like a bunch of stairs and you gotta yell up to like get everybody downstairs? Just open the door and just top of her lungs. Get your butt down here! Grand Magus is back! <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> Again, you're yelling down and across the hall to where the rooms are, but mm-hmm. I love it. Perfect. Uh, Paul Barrow, Gus, how do you respond? Okay, I'm gonna... Um, just because I was able to quickly look at what eight does for me and a thing I've chosen, I think I wake up to a fair, a pixie esque thing tapping me on the nose. All right. I'll bite. Go on. And as I, as I open my eyes, it it flitters away. It just got like a. Okay. Um, and I will go down and I'm, I'm confused by it, but I'll go downstairs. Uh, yeah. Again, can't stress enough that there aren't stairs for you guys to go in. You walk out your room, you can see Darling down the hall and in the entrance to the library, and you proceed there. In this ga- great game of fantasy, you won't just give us stairs? You're on the top level. I explained that at the beginning. I'm sorry, but you don't understand basic geography. It is what it is. The you walk down the stairs. You walk down four flights. You hit the first level. You open up the doors. You realize there's a giant field and a mountain range in the end, and you have fucked up. Beautiful. So then you go up four levels of stairs again, and in fact, the Grand Magus gets pissed, and he just like hit, flicks his fingers, and now you're walking up endless stairs for like a good 20 minutes. And you get to the top, there we go. and they go, there we go. <laughs> you walked up the endless stairs, and everybody has a good laugh at your expense. I, I would appreciate if you didn't railroad my character in that decision. I wanted to laugh at his expense <laughs> because I want to do it, not because you said so. <laughs> oh, I, to be fair, absolutely, <laughs> you get to choose. Can I just roll a stare check? I will laugh nope. at him. Can I roll a laugh Excellent. check? Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, please. And roll it with triple advantage. It's a million. <laughs> it's a million? <laughs> it's a it, that's like, you that's like 17 natural 20s at least, so like it's <laughs> it's humiliating. Okay, it's so humiliating. Paul Barrow, you, you join the crowd. Um, <sighs> all right. Tell me your plan. And he sits down on a couch and waits. Step one. <laughs> Get back to me. Step two. Smooch. Hmm. All right. Remember, he... I get one teleport. Is that what we agreed upon? Does it work? Does the teleport just do space or like time and space? Oh, just space. If it could do time, I wouldn't have been searching for a way to. Oh, I thought you time. were the grandest magus. I am the grandest magus. That's true. Thank you. So, like... You got something you want to say, big boy? <laughs> nah, I'm good. You have some of the food, bro? What I would today? love some food. I, I, I could smell what you were cooking. Yesterday, it was delicious smelling. It's, I thought it was kind of weird you didn't come out and have it. <laughs> I told you I was retiring for the nighttime. Yeah. What I do in my chambers is my business, Gus. You're right. So the plan is to pop in where Papa is. 
Mm-hmm. We we grab him, pull him back through big window. Yeah. Close window and roll out. Oh, that's a wonderful plan. This, I wish I would have thought of it. This is your plan. There's no why you asking I another plan. I did not come up with this plan at all. No, whoever it was goes... You are plan. the masterminds behind this. this I'm just Johnny here Dancer. to facilitate. Ha, good job. Is that the plan, then? We want to just pop into where Papa is being held and grab him and scooby-doo our way back in there, whatever that means. Is it once per day? I can I can see places a few times per day, but I can only open a, a, a gateway once. And there is a limited duration. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a downside with, 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 with just grabbing Papa and just dragging him through here, man. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, yeah. Deal. This good. Perfect. Set portal to father. Perfect. Real quick, um, any last minute preparations or once more to the breach? I have the things to grab papa. You have portal. I say we're ready. Yeah. I have a last, I'll make a lasso real quick out of my hemp and rope. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to wrangling Dude. doggies on the prairie. <laughs> Get in, little baby. I'm, I'm just fucking. No, I'm just, just saying. Just um, saying things. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> because I love the randomness of the dice, I will allow you three players to elect one person to roll a percentage die for me. Who's who's feeling good about this? I feel like I'm going to roll 69. I'm just going to You're going to come out your papa's butt if you roll 69. I've had some good rolls tonight, but I've also I, had some so bad. So it's probably not have me do it. I've been the extreme, so I don't know if I'm, I'm in exactly Okay, this. they're both saying no. I'll do it. Thank you. I mean, I can guarantee a 69. I don't know if it's good or bad. You're, you're stalling. I'm doing it. It's going. A 45. Mm, what a good Mine would have been higher. So with a 45... <clears throat> the Grand Magus walks up to the windows. <gasps> My 45... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shine down reference, take it. Uh, Staring down the barrel of a 45. 45. Yeah, 45. and so he, he puts yeah, his hands Nickelback up is here. to the window. Oh, God, I just realized I oh, walked no. right into your dumb dad <laughs> joke from last week. Um, he puts his hands up, and um, you see the windows shimmer. And then you can see um, half a dozen uh, what can only be described as prison cells. Like, it's carved into this rock area, but there are prison cells. And there's bars, and and seemingly uh, you don't see anything else from your vantage point. Um, You can see that there are figures in some of these from where you're standing. Um, but none of them look like your dad. But you can't see all of them. So, is it? So, did you, is this where he is? Ah, uh, yeah. This is where I can feel him. He's in one of these. I'm. I sorry. The area is a little small. I couldn't get my window in his exact cell. But I'm pretty sure he's in the back somewhere. Okay, so sneak in, get that, bring back. Sure. Now, <clears throat> I just have to ask a question. We should have probably went over this before I popped up the portal. Do you want me here to hold the portal open, or do you want me to go with you in case shenanigans go down? And <laughs> you know, I'm the grandest of maguses, right? Like, I got this. Deal, dealer's choice. Mm, you should hold it open. Love that idea. And he sits down on the couch. Let me know when you're ready. Just for the record, I have no means by which to open any of these certainly to be locked doors. We can, we can, we can figure out how to lock pick it open, maybe. Yeah, we'll figure out how to escape from the prison. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait here with the grandest magus. 
<laughs> it was our general plan to pop in, grab dad, come out. There was no other thoughts. No other thoughts to this. That may be your plans, bro. I made a lasso. I'm not stepping through another door. You, uh, so I can go spend my life in jail away from my wife. No thanks, bro. No thanks. Babaro is holding his hands outside of the portal, his arms stretching as far as they can. Once Papa hits these arms, I pull him in. And now you're gonna have random arms out in the middle of- He's in a different cell! You're just gonna make really weird friends over there! You've got- as far as they're concerned, you're just two disembodied arms! You know what the prisoners do to two disembodied arms, bro? No, please tell me in detail. <laughs> you're about to experience it! What's it feel like on your hands? I did not think we were in cell, but in like in in the middle of several rooms, like hallways. No, I think we're we're in a cell, just the wrong one. No, no, no. You're you're we not. You're looking hallway. at other cells. You're not looking through bars. I'm not tickling oh, okay. someone's fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone goes. It's been a while since I've had bare arms on me, huh? Tell me what you feel, son. I don't need anything more than those hands, baby. I feel insecure. <laughs> Pulls his hands back in. <laughs> I wait for until I see Papa. Roll for two knuckle shuffle. <laughs> um, give me, give me thirty seconds, sister. You unlock. I grab. We run back. You're assuming I know how to unlock. I don't even know what's up. Look, look at this door. You have magic. Use magic. Okay, the magic okay. doesn't solve here's, everything. Here's the new plan. I'll hold the window open. <laughs> Grandis Magus goes in, unlocks the door. <laughs> you grab Papa, come back. Um, Can we tie a rope around me? I, I guess that you could hold the door open, Gus. Are you proficient in the arcane arts? Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you? Pr uh, can you make a souffle? <laughs> uh. I could summon one up, but I don't think it would taste as good as yours. I, I can assure you that. <laughs> and I ain't gonna hold this window quite open as wide as you would, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> that can be the plan. I can go in there. We can bust open some doors and get your papa and come back. And ideally, you'll keep that door open for us. Worst case scenario in this one, I'm just here in the tower. <laughs> I try to figure out how to get it to May tomorrow. <laughs> and then how do we all get back? <laughs> <laughs> so I can teleport me, so I'm fine. There yeah, you go. And the both of us are fine. Oh, no, I don't have to figure it out. Grant Magus can send it to May tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and he we're can send it to you guys the next day. I'm not whatever. sure why care. you want to go to May, but it's fine. Uh, oh, right, your wife. Not not the month. My bad. Hmm. Milking that joke for all it's worth. Yeah. Gross. Uh, I mean, it's, I'm just saying. I'm like, just going to sneak out. You tell me what the move is. How are you going to get the door? I love Can you move this portal closer to Papa, where he's in arm's reach? Uh, yeah, uh, tomorrow we can shoot for Papa's cell, see if you can get a little closer. <laughs> Looking at the door cells through the the window, what what kind of locking mechanism is there? The locking kind. Um, you're pretty like familiar with them. It literally, I say that you can see cell like uh, cell bars across like a wooden door, so you can tell there's mm -hmm. a lock, a physical lock that you can um, attempt to open. Right? It's not like this mundane thing. And in fact, it looks a little crude to you. I can smash this. You can. Let us go. I will. I'd like to to stealth out of the window and onto the floor of this uh, prison area. Uh, I cast pass without a trace before he goes. I'd also like to cast that, the thing. <laughs> okay, uh, pass without a trace is ranges. I think it's like twenty yards. It, it's what it's. There's no range in the way that you think of it. It's creatures. You choose select creatures within range, and then they are affected by oh, the spell. Oh, cool, great, excellent. I'm pretty sure. I'll double. And uh, darling, what would you like to do? I feel like I like to life. cast enhance ability on Paul Barrow. Okay. And give him sure. bull's strength. Uh, so the target has advantage on strength checks and. His or her carrying capacity doubles. 
Oh, good. Uh, I like to imagine easily, the little sparkles of magic dust him, and there's like a fake set of bear ears. Or sorry, bull horns. Sorry, wrong one. Oh, nice. Bull horns like show up on the sides. I, I do love the idea of a <laughs> fake set of bear ears in next to his original bear ears. <laughs> yeah. I, was I like, can hear everything. Real <laughs> but no, bull horns is re- way cooler and more mm-hmm. thematically correct. Yes, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. That's Perfect. Uh, and so. For those of you within 30 feet of Gus, may have a plus 10 to your stealth checks. Dang. But you should know your roll um, minus 10 as well. Wait, say again? Once you go out of range of Gus, who's staying inside... What's his range? Your- your stealth roll may be uh, affected. Oh, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> oh, no, it's actually with a no. I'm so sorry. I'm rereading this. Ignore that last bit. It's a duration for an hour. You just have to be within 30 feet of him when he casts it. Hey, That's how Nokova, next time, tweet at me. Yeah. But yeah, you okay, got cool. me. You're right, girl. I, I misread uh, it. In my I haste. rolled it earlier. It was a four, so it's a f- 14. Or eight, so 18 total because I have plus four for stealth. Is that what that phase is? Two plus fourteen. So what's your roll? So eighteen total. Eighteen. Excellent, darling. Um. So it's my number plus ten. It will be yeah, yeah. thirty-four. Dear lord. I got a twenty-four, right. so the plus ten. You both think you're stealthy, Gus? Are you going along or are you hanging out? Uh, I don't think I need to roll anything to get as close to the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You don't. I'm just asking if you are are following them and therefore want to do a no, stealth check. No, abs- absolutely. I'm not going into a maximum security prison with no plan on how to open a door. Well, it was your plan. Uh, <laughs> all right, great. <laughs> you two sneak up um, and you explore uh, around these uh, cells. And, and there are... Do you need to do something? Yeah, so I would like to know, based on the locks, everything now called Magic Awareness um, that I took as a barb, level three. <clears throat> it's this Ooh, fancy. wild magic barbarian or whatever. Ooh, hot. Uh, it lets me know until the end of my next turn, you know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet that isn't behind total cover. When you sense the spell, you learn which school of magic it belongs to. I just want to know if like, that gives me any insight to the type of locks, if there's anything special yeah, about the locking um, mechanisms. The the locks appear really uh, not to be magical. Oh, okay, but okay. you are. Let me tell you, you you go through that window, you just a uh, buzzing behind you because that window Hair is standing. fucking magical. Okay. Baba, <laughs> Baba, which one are you in? How do you say that loud enough that? All the cells can hear it, or do you go cell by cell and do that? I'm whispering kind of as if I go by, waiting for a response. Because I imagine people would come to the... Just think, if someone's in there, maybe they come to the, the front of it. Sure. Um, so you, you explore, and, and you know, you, you do this, and sometimes you look in, you see nothing. Sometimes you look in, you see, like, a person on the floor asleep, and, uh, and then some, like, little creatures are showing up. Just kind of, to, they're not all humanoids, weirdly enough. Um, some of these are beasts in, in these cages, <clears throat> and then uh, eventually, you you come to one and and you say, "Papa," and uh, you see the disheveled and pretty wounded version of Declan Plant, uh, Declan Derringer, and he says, like, what? what? No hesitation. You see Paul Barrow grow a little bit in size and flex Ooh. as I go into rage mode. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to, and, and so something else happens when I do this, stand by. Mm-hmm. You grow That's these real- giant pair of fairy wings? Oh, tell me that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. It's a D8. <laughs> I'll tell you know in just a second. Seven. Seven. Uh, flowers and vines temporarily grow around you until your rage ends. The ground within 15 feet of you is difficult terrain for your enemies. 
So as I as I grow, it's like this this plants and vines bust up around me in this this circle, um, and I'm going to two hand like grab like hurrah and smash into this lock or attempt to smash in this lock. Roll me an athletics check. And uh, what did I get to add to that because of the bull strength? Uh, you do an advantage. Oh, with advantage, you roll two times. Well, that's a crit right there, boys and girls. That's a twenty-eight. Woo! Continue. I'm I mean, roll you really can't get anything better. <laughs> you can't, yeah. Can't. <laughs> I am gonna try. I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm, I'm not gonna take your rolls away from me. That's fucked up. Now nah, it's a nineteen. If you double crit. Dwayne explodes. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> Dwayne's dead. <laughs> Do you crit in a 19? You lion sack of shit? Yeah, I'm a champion fighter and, 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 uh, and a magic barbarian. I'm a magic and barbarian. And also, I'm <laughs> a level one wizard, so I've taken the uh, cantrip <laughs> unlocking. It's new. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> you can't even find it on D&D Beyond. It's very underground. <laughs> it's kind of like knock, but it's, but it's like a knock But you can get it from cantrip, knock, knock. and it just it's way better. Uh, and I got it in my backstory. And so you can do like a train mending thing. And there's like a there's like a boat that I like fold up into. This yeah, and then that's and what in goes in the lock and then unlocks it. It's really cool. <laughs> the boat does. It has several cannons mounted on it. In full that's actually crew. where C two took places inside of this lock. That's, that's true. It was this <laughs> ship, and it was this little ship in a bottle. And in the bottle, you could see all the continents. Anyways, so you we've lost the, we've lost the plot. Here. It's <laughs> fucking. <laughs> smash this door and you are greeted with the sound of a single plank. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> nothing but splinters and wood and metal. It fucking goes everywhere. And po- your papa is like all, like almost a little battered by the door and all the, the stuff. It doesn't like hurt him by any means, but certainly uh, dishevels him. Uh, Paul? No time. Pick him up and I'm heading back to the window. You run into the cell, and you pick up your papa, and you run back towards this window. Darling, this whole time you've been sneaking, where would you say you are in relation to Paul Bearer when he smashes through the door? Uh, she would have been close by because she didn't know if she was going to come in and do the little, uh, try to unlock it with some mm-hmm. how, uh, or have him smash it. Sure. Uh, as soon as he smashes the door, she's like, all right, time to turn tail and go back to the window. Got papa. When you walk back in, you see the sight of the Grandis Magus. He's got his arms like outstretched, both hands, as he's holding the window open. And Gus is feeding him nachos into his open mouth. <laughs> his hands are busy. That is so good. Thank you, Gus. Oh, I am not I don't even know how you made it. Um, and so, Gus, you are greeted with this visage. Not massage. Excuse me. Massage. Visage. The 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 scenery of Darling turning, and I believe three foxtails currently shifting, yes. and she bolts towards you. This slender frame. This younger sister. This delicate form rushing towards you. And you've never seen her run faster, truly. She knows the danger that's coming. She knows the noise that's made. And you hear the smashing of the door, right? As echoes through the library and through the prison cells. And you see Paul Barrow bursting through the door with big artificial magical bullhorns with papa. Uh, haphazardly fireman over his shoulder and Paul Barrow is bigger than he's ever been truly especially with these big bullhorns I mean you might think he this time is a little bit bigger than you and his his muscles are bulging and you can see the intensity the rage barreling through him and you hear what Gus you would know probably better than anybody else the howls of the Gies Blanc and 
Paul Barrow. Beat. Every step feels like it's the last one he'll take, knowing full well there is some force coming. Paul Barrow knows he wasn't stealthy. He knows that he is doing a smash and grab. And each foot digs into the earth itself. And you see dirt flying. And Paul Barrow, do you throw Declan or do you leap towards the window? What do you do? Oh, if I'm close enough, I leap with. Because, I mean, the the difference in those two things is just me staying behind or not. So I'm, I'm leaping. You leap towards that window and and one arm holding out a Declan the other reaching in hoping you know you're gonna make it and right before your hand hits the window that's where we're gonna end this episode hey uh so Devin you're already prepared so let's go <laughs> ahead and why don't you tell me what you got at level 8 why don't you talk about the, that, and then we'll go around the table. Yeah, so the life of a barbarian is very easy, everybody. <laughs> just so you know. Um, let me go Smash, with, grab, smash, grab. So I got. I just took Lines level three in barbarian, so level eight, so five and three, fighter uh, five and barbarian three. And so I took the path of wild magic. Um, and the, the two things that it gave me with that is, one was magic awareness. So what, I just, what we heard in the episode was I can... Uh, know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet that isn't behind total cover and then I, I can know what kind of magic it belongs to. Now I can use that three times per long rest. And then the other thing <clears throat> is Wild Surge. So when I enter Rage I kind of cheated on the first one. But when I enter Rage I roll on the magic table to determine the magical effect. Um, and so there's eight different things. And so you can go look that up on there. And so what you heard happen today was I rolled a seven and got the flowers and vines and things. So yeah, just some some extra damage things mostly uh, when I go into rage mode. And that is all. Avon, Shane, who's ready? I can go. Shane, uh, mine's pretty simple. Uh, it's just uh, a new feature uh, from my homebrew uh, Gourmand class. Uh, this ability is called Second Course. It just means that I'm able to steal uh, an additional uh, ability or feature from uh, the creatures that I consume and have two active effects at once. Sick. Um, I still don't know whether or not I've chosen what I wanted for this level up. Perfect. Uh, well, didn't you make note of it and just remind me the next time we record and we'll do that at the top of the episode. Sound good? Sounds good. No reason to rush your choices. All right. That's cool. not the life we lead here. Oh, and an ASI. It's a little late. <laughs> yeah. Wait, <laughs> you going to feature and an ASI at the same time? That smells weird. Uh, this, this, yeah, it's because I had to move some things around to make it exactly fit into the homebrew. Because there's not exactly a good spot for that feature to go. In the uh, words of Shane, so sounds a little OP, but whatever, dude. <laughs> hey, I also I cheated know, and now have seven other features. Yeah, we heard them. You said you, <laughs> you, you, you rolled a 1d8. Uh, I'm just kidding, man. Chill. Uh, find some <laughs> chill. Be chill. I understand that you're really bro, fucking angry, but bro, we'll argue bro. about this afterwards. And Did we'll... you know there's a feature called the Tale of Beloved Friends? That's a feat. In uh, that's really cool. What's no, it do? Tell me no, about it. No, that's homebrew. That is homebrew from a different campaign, and you're seeing my shit. <laughs> ne- never mind. Well, it's on my oh, account. Oh, so no, no, no. the fuck out. <laughs> uh, hey, so Shane, do me your Yo. fucking job and roll for humanity. Do me your job. <laughs> I will. I will do your job. Uh, Cat Depot is the charity that we're rolling for in our roll for animality. You can become a meowster activist as well by rolling dice at your table and giving the money to the charity of your choice. Cats are important. Uh, where's my dice roller? There you are. Sorry, I was leveling up. Oops. Uh, whatever, I got a die right here. 
17. Damn. Woo. That's real good. I think if you roll nine, we double it. Because cats have nine. nine lives. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Neat little neat little cute spin. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well, I tried it last time with two cats. I said two cat lives last last episode. No one. Whatever. Whatever. Two cat, two okay. <laughs> That's fine, man. Like, what do you want? Yeah, it's what okay. Want from us? <clears throat> I don't know. What do you want? I guess I just want to be needed. I just want to be needed, I guess. Yeah, no, it's I, I just want to be needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me tell you a dad joke. Let me tell you a dad joke. Why do paladins wear chainmail? Ooh, hold on. Nope, no, I don't know. Couldn't say. No, I don't know. Chainsaw, I'm ashamed of you. Because you're gonna you're gonna know that it should have you should have known this. Because it's holy armor. <laughs> you should have known that one. <laughs> you, I, the you the amount of times you you've taken Devin. paladins in armor and sunken them, you should know these. Yeah, but I don't. That's like that's like the old saying, like these are my church pants. Get it? Because they're holy. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's just D and D. Hey, the chainmail fits, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Shane, tell me a funny ass joke. One up me. Uh, Make Avon snicker the way I just did. Do you remember (laughs) that joke I told you about my spine? No, you don't have one. It was about a week back. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, you made Devin giggle. That's funny. <laughs> it's because I have back issues. I love that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Avon. I was going to say issues. about Devin's back, but I didn't want to call you out like that. It's fine, dude. I don't care. My back you, Okay. G- Jen's, Do it again. again. <laughs> hey, you guys hear that joke that I told the, the, about Devin's back? I told you it was very personal. God. We Jen's that's fine. That's slow. What about it? It was about a week back. <laughs> <laughs> Slow. Actually, now that you okay. say it, I do feel pretty bad <laughs> hearing it. I don't <laughs> like it now. Welcome to it's the Wall Street table Hey, tell me a funny ass <laughs> joke, Avon. Uh, why do bees have sticky hair? Boobies. Why? why? <laughs> you always. <laughs> I was gonna say that. Anyways, <laughs> Avon, tell me your joke. Tell me the answer. I don't know. Shane, do you know? Uh, not no. Yeah. Because they use a honeycomb. Oh, that's yeah. good. Oh, that's so that was, I was like right there. I was like, <laughs> that's oh, so good. I, if I didn't get it immediately, I shouldn't sit here and work it out. I would have got it for like two more seconds. <laughs> no, you would have got it. Just like the holy armor. Uh, Devin, tell me a funny ass joke. To the person who stole my diary and then died, my thoughts are with your family. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Uh, and what has rapidly become the worst part of our episode, Devin, as oh, we no. always say. I don't even feel anything anymore. We love, we love you. you. Bye. We love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>